Legend of Total War here, and today we've got a Doomstack video. This army here is apparently a, a potential newcomer to the Doomstack family. Now, the Doomstack that I've always had for um, for the Dwarfs is basically a pretty balanced stack of Organ Guns, Thunderers, and Iron Breakers with some heroes. It's basically a four-tiered line of attack defense, sort of, where the heroes uh, are the first line of defense. Once they're damaged, they have to fall back, and then the... Iron Breakers then hold the line from there, and once they're broken, you've got the Thunderers and then the, you know, the Organ Guns aren't going to hold the line, but basically they have to be dishing out damage the entire time. And usually that works out really well in all situations. But the idea of getting all Trollhammer torpedoes, this is really interesting because it would certainly be very expensive, I'm sure, uh, but getting this many uh, engineers would be quite tricky to do, um, especially early on in a campaign. And uh, most of my Dwarf campaigns usually don't reach that point. Anyway, we're going to give this a shot and see how it does against two armies of High Elves. Um, and just basically see how it, how it handles uh, being outnumbered two to one. Because that's not really going to come in handy. I'm not going to deny enemy reinforcements. I'll let them all come and we'll just see how it goes. So what I really want to grade this army on is basically how easy it is to use. And then also just how what's its, what's its actual killing power. Because another thing about this kind of Doomstack as well is that you're not going to be able to get a lot of them. See, the Doomstack that I utilize, I can essentially recruit one Doomstack for every tier 5 settlement that I've got because I use one of each type of hero. So I can get loads of them. But let's just see how powerful this is before we start judging it. Um, yeah, I think over here without too many obstructions would be best. It, might be good to check a board formation as well. For the cutters encore. A Taking bit. What the now we don't have to worry about their sisters of Avalon because they do magic and fire damage, and we have magic resistance and fire resistance. So people often ask me about the sisters of Avalon versus dwarfs, and I usually say don't worry about it that much because the dwarfs will recruit um, iron breakers. Ah, uh, sorry, iron drakes. But they usually don't get that many of them. So you just don't ignore them, but just don't worry about them too much. You know, put them in the gaps and maybe move them a bit more forward. I think that looks pretty interesting. As for these ones here, just put them up front. They don't matter. Or even better still, maybe put them at the flanks. Because the cavalry is probably going to be the biggest concern. Just because they're going to come in quickly. And Belagar, you can stay up front. So, alright, let's see how this goes. Because this, this is like my first time using... In fact, I very rarely ever get Trollhammer torpedoes. Because I just... This has got low range, but I guess if you got this many Master Engineers... Um, 143 range is really good. they got 43 ammo. So, yeah, that... We'll see how much ammo they use up as well. But honestly, if it can take out two of these armies here without much damage and without say say if it uses up two thirds of its ammo. I'd be pretty happy with that. Enemy have got some artillery as well. I guess you'd have to worry about um, units such as cannons. Cause then you'd have to rush up and try and stop it. Cause the cannons would wreck iron drakes really quickly. Start getting ready. So yeah, just have them tank the charge with these guys here shooting at it. I don't expect them to be particularly accurate from that distance, but that's not bad. And they're shooting super fast. That's pretty good. And there's our dragon princes. They're they're not exactly squishy units. Oh, 
Alright, we got a Sun Dragon coming in over here. Coming in hot. Take it out. That's a lot of damage for just a couple of shots. Wow, that was super quick. Enemy general just died. So Belagar's tanking the Sisters of Avalon shots for the time being. So he's got an Iron Warden's tanker, that's good. Okay, we've got, got stuff coming in over here. Oh, Phoenix is gone. It's not going to get a chance to revive. It doesn't get a chance to activate its ability. It dies so quick. Holy crap. Jesus, that dragon just totally suck it in the face. I don't think I've ever seen a star dragon die that fast. Belagar can still tank that for a bit. Took a bit of damage over here. Okay, we might have to start moving up. But the problem is there's still mobile forces over here that need to be dealt with. Holy crap. That actually didn't do much damage at all. Okay, Belagar's still doing fine. He can tank that for a bit longer. What's his magic resist? It's pretty good. What's this over here? It's probably artillery. Alright, this one here ran out of ammo. But a lot of them still have a decent amount. Because if you ever ran out, that would be a big problem. But I'm sure your lord would have lightning strike. But yeah, that's those are two serious armies that just really didn't do much damage, apart from this one here, which took on some Dragon Princes and Phoenix Guard, uh, that actually went really well. I mean, we could have corner camped, and it would have probably gone even better, because they just wouldn't have been able to flank us at all. I just wanted to see how they'd go with this situation. Damn. And he got a heroic victory. So, the order resolver was wrong, um... Those two armies were actually considered stronger than what we had, but they performed above what they were supposed to. So I wouldn't mind having a look at the rest of the campaign. Oh man, money's not a problem. And I also want to see what the cost of this is. So yeah, you're clearly doing just fine. What turn number is this? Because I think this is on legendary difficulty. You're not welcome. So I won't yeah, it is a legendary. Um, no, it doesn't matter. I completely conquered the empire too, and Karakadrin has a pretty slow start usually. Thanks. Talk fast. 
can't remember what turn number this is. Yeah, that's pretty good. Turn 149 for this? That's pretty good. How many sentiments do you have? 207. That's really good. Ugh, my game's shitting itself. It's clogged up with cheese. Alright, let's have a look. It might be just because of uh, how many save files I've got. I need to go out and clear a whole bunch. Are you doing it with... No, you're not doing it with all your armies. Let me just see. How many of those armies do you have doing it? Wait, you got slayers in your army. Okay, whatever. Got no problems with these armies. So it looks like you were only able to get one of them. And it costs 15,900. Now, let's compare that to a different Doom stack. It's about the same price. A little bit more expensive. That's pretty similar to the Doom stacks I get. I usually don't get Quarrelers. I get one more Organ Gun. And only get one Iron Drake. And there's no Master Engineer in here. Now, if we were... And you got the Sword of Cain as well. Okay. If we were to have a look at how many Master Engineers you've got available at this turn. Let's see. So, yeah. You've got access to 17 of them. So, you would be essentially able to get two... Uh, doom stacks of that at this current time um, Which not not that you would need to get any more of them or really any of them in the first place because that was Yeah, just yeah one of these is, is just amazing anyway um, That's a serious contender for doom stack the only the biggest problem with this one is not the cost the cost seems fine uh, The biggest problem is just the capacity for master engineers because they are of the the dwarf and heroes they are the one that's the uh, the most time-consuming to get more of uh, because you need to get lots of tier 5 settlements and that takes a while for the dwarves to get there. But it was extremely strong, for sure. Are these properly leveled up? Yeah, yeah. So they've all got all of the various bonuses. So that's, that's basically maxed out. But yeah, look, I would have to say that that's probably the strongest dwarf doom stack that you can make. Um, I don't know if switching out another um, Iron Drake for another master engineer would make it better but yeah that was very impressive anyway that's the end of this one guys hope you enjoyed it hope you learned something and we'll see you next time fuckers